as to who that guy was from the ring of all this stuff. Good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Yes, I did fly from me from Eastern Michigan here because Uche says show up. <laughs> so when my senior vice president says show up, I show up because she does such a remarkable job, not just on her job, but just our people in general. Hey, give her a round of applause for the senior vice president. She calls me, she calls me the great one and the great leader. Today, you're the great leader today because this is a phenomenal event. I was, wasn't ready mentally when I saw the people in the hallway and said, oh my God, I gotta put on my game face today. So, <laughs> thank you for having me. Yes, Global African Business Association, we are a business education and a business supported network for African Caribbean businesses. It is a brainchild of myself, and my executive vice president, Rary Onamake, who is not here with us today, we thought about this in a city called Houston, Texas. About five years ago, I had a vision of empowering Africans and Caribbean people in business in terms of helping them find themselves uh, in terms of business, in terms of access, to capital in terms of understanding how this process works in the United States, especially with the visas. So we decided to do this. We had to pick a couple of cities in Michigan. We said, hey, let's do Inksters. Why do we do Inksters? Six square miles, 25,000 residents, and they don't have their own economy and the, and the government there is broken. Perfect place. We didn't choose Detroit because there's too much competition in Detroit, so we chose Inksters. But just 10 miles west of Detroit. But on that journey, I kept asking myself, God, why are you making me move back to Michigan? I love Texas. It doesn't snow here. I love the people. I love the energy. So Lord, why are you, why are you making me move back to Michigan? Oh my God, I left Michigan to get away from all that. Well, when I got there and came back home, I realized the greater need for our community out there. And I said to myself, if we can just have a platform that we can jumpstart this association, hopefully we can make it a reality. So we started off actually not as GABA, but as NABA. That stands for National African Business Association. And we started off as, we started off as NABA um, <clears throat> because at the, at the time we wanted a national focus. And so, but what we realized was that so many people were coming up to us saying, you know, we really need an organization like this to teach us how to do business, not just in the state of Michigan, but how to do business in Africa, real business. And so what we realized was we were filling a gap. So what we started doing was recruiting people with different expertise in micro lending in business solutions, in real estate, and we see customer service, and things like that, and nonprofit experiences, and kind of creating a one-stop shop. And that one-stop shop resonated with the rest of the community. And of course, 80% of this organization is women. That's the pitch. I did that on purpose. Not because I just love women, I do love women, but not because of that, because <laughs> women, our business, our leading the nation in business, in terms of business development. I said, well, we need to have women run the show. Now, of course, they always want me to come out here and speak and all these wonderful things, and I appreciate those things, but the reality is about our organization is that it's, it's moving along because of the women. And so, things started, started evolving. We got involved with city government. I got elected to the library board. Only four Nigerians in the state of Michigan, actually four Africans in the state of Michigan, have been elected, and I'm the fourth one. That's it. That's right. Why did I get on that library board? Because I, because my background in education, Inkster, the city of Inkster at that time had just lost its school district. The state 
dissolve the school districts. There's no school district, autonomous school district in the city of Inkster. I looked at an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? If I join this library board, we can establish education here in the city of Inkster, and that's what we've been doing. So yes, we are building a new library, thank God. Uh, we break ground next month. It'll be done by January, and we will be moving on to the next step. So there are great things happening. But I want to just say a few words about moving your purpose to reality. Number one, <clears throat> I stepped out of faith when I left Houston. I really did. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going back to Michigan. This is where I try to run away from. I came down to Houston on faith. I moved back to Michigan on faith because I strongly believe in what we were putting together. And what I'm sharing with you today is you have to believe and step out on faith and you have to have the courage to really understand your purpose. And I'm gonna tell you something, when we started this mission, a lot of people laughed at us, a lot of people ridiculed us, People, didn't, people said it had failed in six to 12 months. And after five years, we started this organization on a phone call. And today, we are not just based in Michigan, but we have a presence in Texas, Maryland, Nigeria, Cameroon, and last but not least, Mozambique. And it continues to grow fast. People see the, people see the sincerity with our team. People see how sincere I am. I'm a very sincere person. I, I will fly anywhere on the planet Earth to help that individual, to help you. But you have to step out of faith. You have to have the strength and courage to say to yourself, God, I believe in what I'm doing. And once I believe in what I'm doing, you have to be able to walk in that straight line. You're gonna be ridiculed. People are gonna throw tomatoes at you. But at the end of the day, when you are there, and you're making your wealth, you understand the human capital that you've impacted. I guarantee you this: those people who called you out and try to and try to derail you, they will thank you. They will thank you later. That's exactly what they've done with our organization the last five years. So i So guess what? When Uche said, "Hey, I need you to speak, be my guest speaker at this fashion show," and I said, "If it's a fashion show, and I know how she is, I know this is going to be a successful event." But that it's not just a fashion show, it's also groundbreaking for the organization as a whole. Because we want you to understand that we pull on each other's strengths to make this work. I believe in what she is doing. Not just as a customer service specialist, but not just as a real estate investor, not just in fashion, but I believe in her as an individual. And the reason that is because she has shown me that, hey, I believe in this mission of GAP, and I'm gonna prove it to you today. So I'm saying, anybody that knows me and understands and I know your purpose, I'm gonna invest in you 100% because that's what God has ordained for me. So the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, is that I don't want, when we walk out of here at the end of the program, and you understand your purpose and moving your purpose to reality, the reason why you can move into your reality is because your God is bigger than anything. Your faith is, can move mountains. It can conquer mountains. And I had to believe in that. I came home. My own mother ridiculed me. Ah, I knew you couldn't make it in Houston. Ha, ha, ha. But now you look at me now. I have organizations. I'm impacting people every day. My organization is impacting people. People, uh, other people are impacting people based on what we're teaching them, it's created a snowball effect, guys. So I'm saying all that to say that we have a lot of work to do as a community. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of things to do. But the reality is, is that if I came all the way down here to believe in this program and believe in everybody in this room, because I believe everybody in this room is a change agent. I really do. If we can do this together to move mountains, the world will be a better place. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. I, and, the, and the thing is, the last thing I'm just going to end with this, because I can talk here forever like a preacher. <laughs> Some people think I'm a pastor. I don't know, that might be a problem, but God, be quiet. Um, <laughs> um, but the reality is, is that 
we have a lot of work to do. Our community, our, you see what's going on in the world. You see what's going on in politics. You see what's going on in business. You see what's going on in our schools. Our country, our world is moving backwards, ladies and gentlemen. And right here in this room, we have, the, we have the spirit and the power to change things, to make things a reality the way we see fit. That's what I believe in as president and CEO of the Gala. I didn't know what direction the Gala was moving in. I kept asking myself, God, I'm ready to quit. God said, no, you can't quit. I said, well, God, give me a reason why I can't quit. Then Uche would text me. <laughs> Good morning, great one. That's okay, I can't quit. <laughs> <laughs> or some other member would text me and give me an idea. So I realized how important the mission is. Your mission, ladies and gentlemen, is important. But make sure you have people that support you because of you. Period. No ridicule, no uh, uh, negativity, none of that. You are the future. And everybody in this room, you are the future. And it's our responsibility as change agents to make the world a better place. My name is Akinale Akinami. I'm the president and CEO of Gallup. Thank you for having me. And God bless you.